Daily driving this car out in California has been wonderful, especially with the shitty sound system that I bought for it. But one more thing remains. This is not something I'm used to in Michigan. Every time I'm driving for an hour, I bake the crap out of my hands. I think it's time for some budget tint. You wanna see how bad it is? Check this out. Look at that, farmer's tan without even working on a farm. This is literally from driving. We're gonna go to AutoZone, O'Reilly's, or wherever, whatever auto place has tint that's absolutely cheap, and we're gonna see if it works or not. If you've ever wondered the difference between 20%, 35%, and limo tint, you've got it all in one shot here. This is 20%, that's 35%, right there, that little baby window in the center of the shot, and then Miles car over there is 5% or limo tint. I have to try the sandy cling. This is just too good to try. If you're to follow the instructions step by step, you're gonna have a really bad tint install. I'm just telling you that right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply the year and a half I did of tinting with good quality 3M products with this kind of shitty stuff and see if we can get a reasonable result. Similar to my stereo videos, the one about the subwoofer and this head unit, they both came with kits. Somebody was smart enough to sell a packaged unit of things that you might need to install this. If you're trying to do a real cheap install, I'll tell you right now that whatever is in this window application solution is just basically baby shampoo and water. It's really a basic combination. So you could save some more money if you're gonna go bulk. This thing cost me whatever, 12 bucks. It's got a knife that's <laughs> 50 cents. It's got a random ass rag that they say is lint free. Okay, sure, right. But the important part for me is that I'm out here in California and I do not have a squeegee or you know, basically a hard edge plastic piece. So I'm hoping that that is what makes this whole kit all worth it. Just how bad is the window tint on my car? Well, uh, it really doesn't exist. There's really, it's like a glass fishbowl when you drive up next to me and roll up and see me all hard parked. The first two things I wanna teach you about tint have to do with this. Yes, one of them is the money you save when you end up doing it yourself. Because quite frankly, tint, the most expensive thing is the labor. The materials, even though these sh cheap shitty materials are only 10 bucks for two windows, the really expensive materials are only about 10 bucks for two windows. But the second thing is actually looking at the surface of the money. Pretend for a second this is a flat surface, which is generally flat. When you curve something in one direction, nice simple curve right there, but you see, if you line it up with the camera, it's still flat from one dimension. It's curved from this way, look at it this way, but you can still see there's a straight line on one angle of this surface. If I was to then curve it in multiple ways like this, now you've got a screwed up surface and you've got a lot to deal with. That directly relates to windows. If you look at this bottom line down here, you can tell it looks fairly straight, but if you get super close to it, look at that, there is a slight curve. The middle of it bows out just the slightest bit. Why does that matter so much? Well, on tinting windows, that becomes your biggest enemy. If you own like an F-150 or a big truck like that, the window is actually completely flat and smooth along this way and just curves, a simple curve up the side of the vehicle. But on a car like this, or worse yet, a window like this, there is no angle at which the glass is completely flat. It's always on like a sphere. It looks like it's on a very big sphere. That's the best way to say it. So even, even the rear window like this, it bows down. So okay, well let's try it from this angle. Well, nope, it bows side to side. So that's called a complex curve and that makes tinting very difficult. Let's see what we have here. Lint-free useless cloth. Feels like toilet paper, basic exacto shitty knife. I guarantee it's gonna be baby shampoo. Deionized water, sodium dilecobenzosulfonate. Yeah, exactly. Finally, the most important piece of the hour, this. So I'm gonna scrape the windows. I am gonna use a razor, uh, but I'm not going to be like the jackass that did this front windshield and scratch the shit out of it. It's just simply to remove contaminants. You could in fact use clay bar or something else. This rough surface needs to be completely smooth because you're gonna trash that film, getting it sized up for the window and cut and molded. And then of course on the inside, the exact same thing because of the installation. I'm going to use a little razor blade, and this one right here gently flat against the surface as much as possible to remove the thicker contaminants. I can use the squeegee that I have in there, but I don't want to damage the squeegee on all this rock shit or whatever else is out here. So 
Your goal with all of these steps is to keep the glass and the surface as clean as possible, as long as possible. Any sort of dirt, lint, anything picked up from the edge of the glass, edge of the car, everything can end up transferring on the film. I couldn't help it. This is the static cling version. I said it was horrible, and that's kind of the point of these videos, just to see how bad something like this is. So I'm going to treat it like it's a professional product, but bear in mind that this is probably the lowest bottom of the barrel type of shit that you're going to deal with. This is kind of interesting though. It doesn't look like traditional tint, or at least how it comes packaged. I want to show everybody just how bad this static cling stuff is. Look at this. You can stretch it. It's it's like a rubber. It's more of a rubbery, elastic type of gooey film. It's got like more out of like what a Batman suit would be made out of, more so than window tint. It's thicker and it's bluish purple, which of course is not going to wear well over time. <laughs> this I've got it fairly smoothed out but I'm gonna trim it way up at the top along where there's nobody gonna see this stuff because I need to get this film out of the way it keeps rolling down this stuff is stretchy enough I might be able to pull it into place normal window tint or at least the expensive stuff it does not stretch it shrinks with a little bit of heat and then it's screwed but it does not stretch what I'm gonna do here is trim out the correct shape, which is gonna be a, about a quarter of an inch to half an inch above where the little dots stop. So it's gonna be somewhere in there if you can see through the film at all. If you're in a shop, this step is actually really easy because you can shine a light from the backside and get a real clean view of what's going on. Thankfully, it's still pretty sunny out here in California and I can see through this. Just can't make any mistakes. I'm ready for the great reveal. This is trimmed. It's about a quarter of an inch wider than the dotted surfaces end. And there you go. This is static cling cut to the correct size. So what I'm gonna do next is knock down these bubbles a little bit just to see what it looks like with this. Again, this is kind of out of more curiosity. You can see how thick the film is. This is just horrifying overall. Now I'm not, I'm not, it's on the outside, so don't think I'm actually installing on the outside, I'm just checking it out. Cause like, look at these lines. This is just piss poor in terms of what you would want from, from real tint. And uh, of course, see this bubble coming up with this little finger on the side? Really, you'd want, again, you'd want to heat it up and then mold it to the surface, but we're not doing that with this cheap stuff. So now what I'm gonna do, make sure this surface is clean, this side of the film, spray the inside of the, the window, and install it. One of the number one mistakes you make is if you don't form it to the glass and you see that little finger there, your first instinct is to use this to knock it down. What happens instead is that you end up creasing the film and leaving a permanent crease. That is if you have expensive tint. In this case, this stuff's really plasticky and rubbery and uh, really doesn't respond well to being creased. It kind of is okay with it. So I guess there is one plus side to being cheap. First impression is that it is not passable to me. I did contaminate it, but that's also because it's really difficult to work with in terms of being absolutely perfect. Worse yet, because it has no adhesive, it keeps coming back up so that you can't lock it in. You can't lock the air bubbles out. You can't lock anything other than sunlight out of the car. I don't know about you guys, but that is not even remotely usable or passable as a good tint job. Of course, it does block the heat and the UV rays out, so I guess uh, in the very most vague sense of the definition of tint, it is doing its job. There might be one last saving grace to this static cling window tint, and we're gonna try it. I went out to Rite Aid or God knows where and bought the cheapest hair dryer possible, and of course, uh, I'm gonna use it for these beautiful locks when we're all done, but I wanna see if this hair dryer is capable of heating up and melting those little fingers that you see on the side of the tint to usable, flattened, kind of contouring the surface of the window any better. That's what you do when you have normal tint. Let's see if that works on static cling. Nope, not gonna work. For those of you that are masochists, I went ahead and did it. I put 
static cling window tint installed as professional as I possibly can onto this front window. And you're gonna notice a handful of problems that are my tinting ability, but then more importantly, what happens when you put static cling window tint on a movable front window? First of all, you're gonna notice it's not going to like this at all. And we'll show you in a second. Yeah, there's again, there's more shit just because you ha it's all exposed before you go to install it. But in the general center area, it doesn't look that bad, not gonna lie. Of course, there's my reason I should stick to YouTube and not do tint anymore. And same thing down there. So at first glance with the camera, it looks fairly decent. I mean, you know, it definitely is protecting me. I'm gonna get the camera to focus on the window tint near my hand, and you're gonna see a lot of really weird things happening in the background. And that's because the window tint is bubbly, it's thick, there's so many different issues. Look at, there you go. You can see the palm tree getting all distorted. That's water underneath it, but again, this isn't adhesive based, so it's just gonna stay like that, or in the case of this, start peeling back up. Again, no ability to form it to the window, so the corners start getting really crazy. This is too thick, and of course, very movable, removable even, to uh, be used on front windows. So I can definitely say, do not waste your money on static cling window tint. Of course, if you're trying to install it yourself, let's go ahead and take it up a notch and see if we can get up to the better stuff. Times are wrong. 